American Top 40. Now the Top 40 debut tune by the school teacher from Black Mountain, North Carolina, who won a scholarship to Howard University because of her high grades in the public schools of Washington, D.C., where her family had moved. And she had skipped so many grades that she finished her bachelor's degree in music education when she was only 19. Then she went back to North Carolina as an English literature instructor and also took on the school's music teaching chores. But she had to go from class to class with a pitch pipe and an auto harp because the school couldn't afford a music room with a piano. Those are the early chapters in the life of Roberta Flack. She debuts in the top 40 this week at number 38 in a duet with Donny Hathaway. It's the song that Carol King wrote, You've Got a Friend. Roberta Flack and Donnie Hathaway. You've got a friend. Roberta Flack and Donnie Hathaway at number 38. And the countdown rolls on. The hits from coast to coast. And now, the debut tune by the recording artist who was discovered while she was moonlighting as a nightclub singer and pianist and who, during the day, was a school teacher in the capital city of the United States. She was born in North Carolina, raised in Washington, D.C., went to Howard University on a scholarship and finished with a degree in music education by the time she was 19 years old. For a while, she taught in North Carolina. Then she went back to teach in Washington's public schools. That was her day job. At night, she worked the nightclubs as an accompanist for other acts. And then after a while, she got herself a solo gig at Mr. Henry's Club, which led to a contract with Atlantic Records. Well, yeah, she doesn't moonlight anymore. Performing is full-time now. Her latest single is the week's highest debut song at number 17. The first time ever I saw your face, Roberta Flack. Roberta Flack's The First Time Ever I Saw Your Face, holding number 17 this week. The week's highest debut song on AT40. Casey's Coast to Coast. This is Casey Kasem on American Top 40, and now the current hit by the woman who took over the title of number one female vocalist held by the great Ella Fitzgerald in Downbeat Magazine's annual reader's poll for 18 consecutive years. Every year since 1953, the readers of Downbeat had voted Ella Fitzgerald the number one female vocalist. They gave her that title for 18 years in a row. But when the ballots were counted last December, the voters had picked a new favorite, a relative newcomer. At number 18 this week, here's the Downbeat Reader's current number one female vocalist. That's right, Roberta Flack. The former Washington, D.C. school teacher, Roberta Flack, this week at number 18, with the first time ever, I saw your face. 17 hits to number one and we're counting down. Casey's Coast to Coast. This is Casey Kasem on American Top 40. And you know, very few recording artists make much money directly from record sales, believe it or not. For most artists, the value of a hit is that people will pay money to see them perform in a nightclub. Now, that's steady income. And once they start getting booked into the Las Vegas hotels, then they really got it made. Because that's where the big money is. So, how do you explain a top female solo artist who keeps turning down fat offers from Vegas? Well, here's how she explains it, and I quote it. I don't think my kind of act would go over in Las Vegas. I'm just a little country girl, and I think of Las Vegas as Debbie Reynolds or Connie Stevens or Diana Ross territory. A lot of costume changes and dancing and glamour. I'm a musician. End of quote. And I wouldn't be surprised if Debbie and Connie and Diana were among this lady's biggest fans. Here's a former number one song by Roberta Flack. Strolling in Watching when I turn to spring. Feel like making love. Roberta Flack with a song written by singer-songwriter Gene McDaniels. This week, it's at number four. Casey's Coast to Coast. This is Casey Kasem on American Top 40 in Hollywood. Here now at number 21 is the school teacher from Black Mountain, North Carolina, who earned her bachelor's degree by the time she was 19 years old. Her grades were so high in the public schools of Washington, D.C. that she won a scholarship to Howard University where she majored in music education. Then she went back to North Carolina as an English literature instructor and music teacher. But the school couldn't afford a music room with a piano. So she had to go from class to class with a pitch pipe in her pocket and an auto harp under her arm. 
Those were the early chapters in the life of Roberta Flack. Somewhere in a book, it'll be written that she was among the top artists of at least the early 1970s. That was number one for six weeks back in the summer of 1972. The first time ever I saw your face. Roberta Flack coming in at number 21. Casey's Coast to Coast. You're listening to a countdown of the 40 biggest hits in the USA. And right now we're up to the current hit by the most successful female record producer in the history of the charts. You know, very few women have even attempted to break into this male-dominated profession. Among those who have are Carole King, Barbara Streisand, Sylvia Robinson, and Millie Jackson. The famous female singer who's been producing her own records under the pseudonym Rubina Flake for the past three years not only broke through the sex barrier in record production, she succeeded at it. But the road's been rough. The lady's real name is Roberta Flack. And back in 1975, when she was about to begin her Feel Like Making Love album, her regular producer left the label she records for. So a new producer was assigned. But he didn't work out. So Roberta told the company that she herself would produce the album. Well, the company didn't like that idea, but Roberta insisted. And she says when they thought about all the records she was selling for them and the Grammy she'd won, they gave in and let her produce. The title song from that album, Feel Like Making Love, was a number one smash. But the album itself, it didn't do too well. So when it was time to cut her next album and Roberta wanted to produce that too, the company said no. Once again, Roberta stood her ground and insisted that she could do the job. She got her way. And she was right. That album, titled Blue Lights in the Basement, has already hit the top ten on the LP chart and produced a top five single right here on American Top 40, The Closer I Get to You. This week, Roberta Flack is at number 24 with If Ever I See You Again. I've wondered all my life. Roberta Flack in a song written and produced by Joe Brooks from the movie if Ever I See You Again, the title song. The hits from coast to coast. Well, now we're up to the 14th chart hit by a woman who changed her musical direction because she was too chubby. Recording star Roberta Flack says that when she was attending Howard University in Washington, D.C., she was a music major and was studying to become a brass horn player. Then one day she was looking at a photograph of the band and it changed her life. She says, I saw this picture of me blowing this great big horn with jaws out to here and I couldn't take it. I was very chubby then, 40 pounds heavier than I am now and that wasn't what I wanted to look like. So I changed my major to music education, says Roberta, to teach songs rather than playing instruments. Well, after a while, Roberta's interest changed again, from teaching music to singing. And that's what she's been doing ever since, all because of that chubby picture. This week, she's in the countdown at number 16 with her ninth top 40 hit, Roberta Flack, with the title song from the movie Making Love. Roberta Flack, originally from Asheville, North Carolina, who makes her home in Alexandria, Virginia today, at number 16, moving up three with Making Love. The 15 biggest hits in the USA, still to come. Casey's Coast to Coast, Casey's Coast to Coast. I'm Casey Kasem on Casey's Top 40. Well, now we're up to the latest top ten by Roberta Flack, a singer who got her start as a school teacher moonlighting after class. It all happened in the early 60s after Roberta graduated from Howard University in Washington, D.C. She got a job teaching music in a Washington school, but didn't earn enough money to pay all of her bills. So Roberta decided to moonlight, to work after school and during vacations. She got a job playing piano at an opera restaurant, backing up singing waiters. Roberta also wanted to sing, too, but the only place that would hire her wasn't exactly a haunt for school teachers. It was a strip joint called the 1520 Club. Club, and Roberta got to sing between acts. The manager of the club, an ex-stripper named Tinkerbell, loved Roberta's singing so much that she asked if she could be her manager. Roberta said yes, and just like her namesake in Peter Pan, Tinkerbell quickly worked her magic. Before long, Roberta was a regular at a far more reputable Washington, D.C. club, Mr. Henry's. Senators, congressmen, and entertainers like Bill Cosby and Ramsey Lewis flocked to see her sing. And finally, in 1969, she was discovered by jazz piano great Les McCann. That led to a record contract and six top ten hits. 
And it all began because a former stripper named Tinkerbell had faith in a former school teacher named Roberta. This week, Roberta Flack and singer Maxie Priest have survey song number 26 on Casey's Top 40. Here's Set the Night to Music. Maxie Priest sang with Shaba Ranks on House Call at number 31. And that's Maxie again singing with Roberta Flack on the song that drops from 17 to 26. Set the night to music. Casey's Top 40. 